Hey guys, it's Julie Jamison, interior decorator, helping women of color transform their space to match their vibe. Not only to match their vibe, but to create a space that is completely unique to them using their astrology birth chart. Because what other way is there <laughs> to create a space unique to you, right? So today I wanted to bring you one of my proud moments because I've been decorating my own home and we're done here with the living room and the entryway but I wanted to share with you a DIY that I did with my how I created a media cabinet using the IKEA Calyx system um <laughs> it was an experience I will say um but first let me give you a little bit of a background story of how this even happened right so Back in the day at one of Ikea's Thanksgiving sales, I happened to buy two cubes um, of the Calyx system. And I used, it as, I used it in the kitchen or in the dining room, I should say, as a buffet table. So I combined them together, just put them side by side, nothing special. And I used it as a buffet table. But then as I was gearing up and getting ready to transform the space here in the living room, I said, do I want to buy one or do I want to make one? So I went back and forth, right? And then I finally decided, I was like, you know what? It doesn't hurt to make one. It only They only cost me 40 bucks. If I mess them up, it's just 40 bucks on the dream. Plus, I'm one of those people that I really, really love to work with my hands because it really calms me down and helps me with my anxiety. So I said, sounds like a win-win. Let's do it. So then I said to myself, what do you want it to look like? And before I said to myself, what did I want it to look like? I said to myself, how do I want to feel in my space? It was very, very important for me to feel grounded in my space because I can be a very anxious person. Um, and by bringing in grounding pieces into my space, it helps me to keep me grounded. So I definitely wanted it to be some sort of a wood element in the space. I also wanted it to be part of the focal point in the space. So I wanted it to be something that was very eye-catching. Um, so that's definitely what I wanted it to be. So then I started researching and I said, let me hop on YouTube and see what I can find. And I wasn't that impressed. I was seeing a lot of the same things. I was seeing a lot of rattan transformations. I was seeing a lot of fluted IKEA cabinet transformations. And I just felt like that wasn't timeless. It felt like it was something that was just very trendy. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted something very unique. I wanted something that I knew that I was going to love for years to come. And I wanted something different. I wanted something to be a reflection of who I am. Um, very rooted, very grounded, a person that is very unique, you know. And so i said to myself wait a second julie you've always wanted to incorporate a burl wood piece into your space but burl wood can be super super expensive because it's such a unique wood um and so i went down the rabbit hole of seeing what i could find online before i decided to even try this diy route and the burl wood cabinets were crazy expensive and so i found one i'm gonna put some here for you to see of some inspiration pieces i'm like well i can recreate this or try to right um so then i went down that route and the original thing that i was trying to do to recreate this bro would effect was i came across some youtube videos where people use contact paper burlwood contact paper to kind of just cover up the furniture pieces that they were using to give it the burlwood effect but then a lot of the contact paper that they were using was out of stock on Amazon. Um, long story short, I found something. But then I said to myself, Julie, are you really going to be okay with using contact paper to create this media cabinet? Is it going to irk you? And then I was like, it is going to irk me because I know it's not going to be aligned perfectly. It's, not, it's just not going to be cute. <laughs> it's going to be one of those pieces that from far away, you're like, wow. And then when you get close, you're like, what is going on here? So I was like, that's not what I want. I want my space to be beautiful. I want it to be unique, but I also don't want it to be this like DIY on a budget, looks like it's on a budget kind of thing. So I went deeper into the rabbit hole of YouTube. And then when I went deeper, <laughs> I started searching all these different terms and I found 
this YouTube channel that had a tutorial on how to DIY a, your furniture or anything that you want and make it look like burl wood but using paint instead. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, it incorporates paint. It incorporates like all the things that I love to do. So I was like, all right. So I said, we're going to try this. We are going to try to create a burl wood cabinet out of the Calyx system. And that's exactly what I did. So I want to share that it turned out so beautiful. It looks real. It looks unique. And so I wanted to share the tutorial with you if it's something that you wanted to try in your space because it came out so dope. I was like so proud of this piece. So I had a vision, right? There were some pieces that I saw on different stores like CB2. I saw some on Z Gallery. I saw um, just different stores, right? And I was like, I want to put feet on it and I want handles for it. But as I was going through the process and when I finished the piece, I was like, you know what? It looks beautiful as is. So it's a very modern look. It's a very sleek look. It's not too many fluff fluff going around. There's no handles. I decided not to go with feet. And so it is perfection. So I wanted to share with you how I created this beauty that has become the focal point of this living room along with other pieces on the wall that I decided to put it on so that you can recreate it yourself um, if you want to, or maybe you wanna use, recreate some other sort of furniture piece. Maybe it's a dresser or, or a coffee table, whatever the hell you wanna do. Um, you can use this technique on a bunch of things, which is pretty dope. I'm also gonna link the YouTube video that I found when I went down my rabbit hole of trying to do a Burlwood effect on my own. Um, so you could check it out as well. I am so, so proud of the way that this turned out. It is a one and a one of a kind piece. And it has my heart. And the beautiful thing about it too is that it holds so much in it. If you're familiar with the Calyx system already, you know that it holds a lot. And so I was able to contain what I had in a bookcase that I used to have in the living room. I was able to transfer those items over to the media cabinet and still have space left over to put the kids' school supplies, to put my exercise equipment in, to put some of the little knickknacks that I use to decorate the house when I wanna switch things around. I put that in there and just a bunch of other stuff that nobody needs to see, but I know is in there and I can get it whenever the hell I need to. So I'm also gonna link below all of the supplies that I used to recreate or to create, I should say, this DIY Burlwood Media Cabinet that used to be the IKEA Calyx Cabinet so that if you wanna take a stab at it, you can. If you just wanna look at it, you can. But if this video inspired you to recreate this item or if you just like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, make sure you do all the things y'all already know what to do so and then keep coming back for more home decor videos related to just home decor tied into astrology tied into the chakras tied into all the woo woo so i cannot wait to see you again and let me know what you thought about the video leave a comment below let me know your thoughts and until next time So here's the original Ikea Calyx cubes. I went ahead and primed them so the paint would adhere nice and smooth. And this is the first coat of paint in a light orange color. And of course I had to hide behind the cage so my dog didn't get in the way. But this is what the color looks like. I painted everything but the back of the cubes. And now we're starting off with the process of adding the little dots of gel stains. And then you go in with a wood grain brush on using a lighter shade of the gel stain. So all of this is going to make sense in the end. You're just brushing and giving it that wood effect as if it was real wood. And it's really important that you use a wood grain brush and not just a regular paintbrush for this because it really does make a difference. 
and you're just going through the entire um, side of the cabinet you're gonna have to do this on all sides that are gonna be visible um, for the cabinet so this this process takes a lot of patience patience is an understatement but it is a very therapeutic process I think because I love to paint so you're just gonna adhere the lighter shade on to the whole panel you're just gonna keep repeating and repeating and then once you're done with that this is where the fun part starts I think because now you're gonna go in and just dab with a plastic bag and this is what kind of starts to give it that bro wood effect you start to see kind of it really forming into what we're trying to create here so you're just dabbing and dabbing and this is basically mixing the two colors together um, I found that this wasn't really looking like how the tutorial that I watched had it looking on their video but I made it work um, I just kind of went with the flow and that made this whole process easier I wasn't really sticking to any real plan I was just kind of seeing what was gonna morph out of this because again I only spent 40 bucks on these cabinets I was like let's see what happens some of the steps didn't really work and as you see here I'm just continuing with the process and I make it work and how I did that is I decided that I was gonna go in again on the cabinet with the darker stain and that's kind of how I made it work and did like a plan B with this tutorial just to kind of give it that real look of burl wood so I went in with the darker gel stain just made little dots all over again um, because again it it wasn't working the way that it should have so I just went in on the entire cabinet adding these little black dots because once this is done um, I feel like it's re it really makes it start to look a lot like the burl wood so I don't know if you ever noticed like some wood pieces especially burl wood it has like little dots on it so I was just trying to replicate that by going through this process that I created on my own to just kind of like wing it and make this work because I was determined as you can see so I just kept going in creating dots on the furniture piece until I felt like it looked like the way that I wanted it to look so now I went in with the stencil brush and just tried to kind of give it that ring look effect of the inside of a tree trunk which is basically the burl wood effect and I just kept going through the entire piece seeing you know what pieces needed adjustment and it's you just kind of eyeballing it at this point and seeing what look you're really after and trying to recreate that look with the stencil brush um, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the tutorial because it's just it's just really soothing I don't know what it is about using this stencil brush and just kind of making circles but I thought it was pretty dope <laughs> I went through the entire piece doing this and then Oh my god the final look look at this beauty she is just stunning such an original piece like so dope and of course it deserved a dance break <laughs> yo your girl damn when the vision matches reality <sighs> So I went to Home Depot and got an MDF board and I had them cut it into two 30 by 30 panels for the doors, took it home, sanded it down, made sure that there were no rough edges so it had a nice clean look and then we started the process all over again with priming and I'm going to be honest the process for the doors was not as seamless and here's why. This is way more burl than I wanted, but because it's peeling so much, I had to, like I was forced to put as much black just to cover it up. So once it dries, I'm going to go again over to get rid of this like discoloration and then continue with the rest of the steps. So we are going to make this work. This is what happens with these projects. I'm telling you, they never come out as planned. 
This didn't happen to me the first time around. I didn't do anything different. I followed the same steps. The only difference is that I used the Ikea cabinet last time, but it's weird because it's made out of the same wood as this. So that can't be it. And on top of that, like my stain kept going through the plastic cup and it wasn't doing that the first time. So I have a feeling that maybe the stain is just too strong. It's too potent. I don't know. Look, we gonna make this work. All right, so this is the second door and this one came out way better. It's still not finished. So this was the first one that I tried and it got messed up. So I just repainted and started over. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one because I'm not liking how many black spots are on there is overkill. So I know that shit is gonna bother me. So I'm just gonna repaint it again with the base coat and then just start all over with this one. This one, again, I'm really liking, so I just gotta patch it up and then do the other three steps that have to get done to for the finished look. And now that I got a rhythm going and I know what I need to change, instead of brushing it, like the tutorial says, I'm just gonna tap it because that reduces the paint from coming out. I don't know why it's not working how I did it last time, but this method works way better than this. Um, so I decided to just scratch it and do that panel all over again. And I'm so glad I did it because much, much better because I knew I was gonna be able to live with that other panel. It just was not looking cute. So I was so happy that I went ahead and did everything over. So now the final part is just staining the inside of the doors and then sealing them so that, you know, they don't get messed up because this is something that's gonna be used a lot. So I wanted to make sure that it was nice and sealed and then it was finally time to put on the hinges. I went with invisible hinges and it was a nightmare. It didn't work. We had to scratch it and go with just plain old gold hinges and it worked and I was so, so happy and we had Robert install them. He did an amazing job. And here's the final look guys. I'm so in love with her. If you love this tutorial, make sure you give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends.